Wow, you guys, we are so close to finishing up our Lent adventure map. Um, I'm so glad you guys are with me today and uh, that we get to go through this together. If you look at our map, which I don't have it with me right now, I forgot it again, but we have three spots left. So we're gonna do two of them this week, actually. Uh, this week is kind of a special week. It's called Holy Week, and it is the week leading up to Easter. So we're gonna have today's a Good Friday, which we have in the past done it together um, with like a little senses of the cross activity. Um, but we're going to do this instead. And then it's Easter. That's so crazy. I can't believe we are almost done. My prayer is that you have had fun exploring Jesus's journey to the cross. And most importantly, that it's helped us understand more of God's heart. I want to chat for just a second before we get started about something really sad that happened this last week in Boulder. You may or may not have heard about it, but lots of people in our area are feeling really, really sad and maybe even scared about it. If you're feeling sad or confused or scared about really anything that ever happens, it doesn't have to be just this week, but anytime, um, scared, maybe that's happening when you're in your neighborhood, schools, or anywhere at all, I want to really, really encourage you to talk about it. Find an adult that you trust that could be a mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, teacher, someone at church, and share with them what you're feeling. I know sometimes that's scary to talk about those things, but I just want to encourage you that that is the best thing that we can do for ourselves because sometimes we want to keep it inside of us, but that only lets those feelings of fear or confusion or sadness just grow and grow and it makes them feel sadder or scarier. But when we share them with an adult, it lets those feelings get out so they don't feel quite as big and we don't feel alone in those things. Not only should we talk with an adult that you trust, but we can also and should also talk to God. Jesus said that he is near to people who are sad and they, that feel broken inside. Uh, there are even stories in the Bible where Jesus cried alongside of people, alongside his friends, because when we feel sad, Jesus is with us and he feels sad right alongside of us. So we're going to spend just a quick moment in prayer before we get started for the people, um, especially around Boulder, that are feeling sad and that are hurting. God, thank you that you are near the people who feel sad and that feel broken inside that you comfort them, that you bring peace, and that you just help us to not feel alone. God, I would ask for the people that are feeling sad, alone, scared, that you would remind them that you are with them always. Would you comfort them? Would you help people come together and help one another, comfort one another? Would you help us as we are comforted by you that we can go and comfort the people around us? And help us have courage when we're feeling sad or scared to talk to an adult, to talk to you and to an adult because that helps us get those feelings out and it's the best thing for us. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thanks guys for praying with me for those people that are feeling sad and hurting. Okay, so a little bit of a change of pace, but what is the most surprising thing that has ever happened at a meal? I know that's like a very specific question, but I want you guys to think about that for a second. What's the most surprising thing that's ever happened at a meal? For me, um, something unexpected and surprising is one time Brad and I were eating at an Ethiopian restaurant. And if you've never eaten Ethiopian food, one, it's delicious, but two, they have this really cool way where they, they share all of their meals. And so they have this like big spongy flatbread that like covers like almost the whole table. And then there's all these different piles of food all around the flatbread. The flatbread's kind of like the plate almost. And so what you do is you grab some of the flatbread and then you kind of scoop up a little bit of all the other food and then you almost like use that as your fork or your spoon and then you eat it. It's really awesome and it is delicious, like I said. The first time Brad had it, the owner of this restaurant was kind of showing him how to do it. So she was carefully scooping up a little bit of everything. And then when neither of us expected it, she said, open up and she shoved it in Brad's mouth and just like fed him. It was hilarious and awesome and very surprising. 
maybe you've never had a restaurant owner feed you food before like Brad has, but uh, maybe there's something else at a meal that really surprised you. I think that Jesus loved surprises because he was always doing things that surprised people, even his closest friends who knew them the best. Let's read our story for today and see how Jesus surprised them at a very special meal. The Servant King. It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' friends were arguing. What about? They were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yes, that's right. Stinky feet. Now, the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean just dusty dirty. I mean really stinky dirty. With all those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the street that ended up on their feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt, but it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do that? Only the lowliest servant. I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down and started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that that what these people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes, all of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I'm doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for each other. Now, one of Jesus's friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was, but Jesus knew, and so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas, Jesus said. And Judas got up from the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart and your hearts will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all your sins and you'll be clean on the inside in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I have rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You're going to be very sad, but God's helper will come, and then you'll be filled with a forever happiness that won't leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends, and I love you. They sang their favorite song and walked to their favorite, up to their favorite place in Olive Garden. What did you notice about today's story? Did anything stand out to you? Now, we don't wash people's feet anymore, like on a regular basis. So this is sometimes a hard thing for us to understand in our world today. But what do you think Jesus might have been trying to show them? Was it that people were forever supposed to follow Jesus's footsteps and wash people's feet? If that were the case, I think we would see a lot more Christians constantly washing their guests' feet. But I don't know about you, but no one has ever washed my feet when I go to their house. I think maybe it wasn't quite that, but it was something bigger that Jesus was trying to point out instead of actually washing people's feet. In Jesus's time, it was only the servants that washed the guests' feet. Their feet would get really gross, like the story talked about, and so this was kind of the norm. When someone would come to their house, the servants would wash their feet. It was a way of welcoming and serving them. But it was kind of thought of a job that it was only the servants, the special people, the people that were... Um, kind of honored and thought really highly of, they would never do that because that was for servants. But Jesus was special, right? He was one of those special people who they thought would never ever wash people's feet. But yet he took the job of the servant. And I think that that's the very point here. 
Jesus was setting an example of how we can choose to serve other people. For us, washing people's feet might look like helping someone else without needing anything in return or being kind to someone that no one else is kind to or putting someone else before ourselves, like letting them borrow something that we really, really love or helping them out when it's really not convenient or that it's just really hard for us. I think that's more of what Jesus meant which is pretty cool that we get to look for ways to wash people's feet or um, instead to serve them in ways that maybe we wouldn't expect to or they wouldn't expect to be served. For this week's activity, I want to invite you and your families to choose one of two activities. First one is to either, to bake, <laughs> get my words, words mixed up, to bake flatbread together or to wash one another's feet. Maybe both seem a little odd, um, especially the feet washing one, and that's okay. I sent a recipe for bread in an email to your parents or grandparents, and um, it's a recipe that's kind of similar to the bread that Jesus and his friends might have shared together in this last meal. And this is the meal where they celebrated um, together, and it was a time to remember how Jesus would give up his body on the cross like he broke their actual bread. Or second option, if you choose to wash each other's feet, um, you can do this however you want. Buy a bathtub, you can get a bucket. Um, it might feel a little awkward and that's okay. Um, but it, I want it to be a reminder to follow in Jesus's footsteps by serving others. So as, if you choose that one, as you take turns washing one another's feet, as weird as you may feel, weird is not always bad, uncomfortable is not bad, so that's okay if it feels uncomfortable, I encourage you to say something encouraging to the person that you're washing their feet so that it can be an activity of just lifting one another up. So those are your options. Um, it's just a way to remember this meal that Jesus shared. That was a very special meal. They were celebrating Passover and then it was really preparing them for Jesus going to the cross. All right, have fun with those activities. Let me know it when you choose how it was, if it was weird, if it was gross, how the bread tasted, if it was yummy, if it was different. I wanna know all the things. All right, let's pray and then um, you guys can talk with the family of which one you're going to do and when you're going to do it. God, thank you that you sent Jesus um, and that he was an example to us of how we can better love people and serve people. This week, whatever activity we choose, um, may we use it as a reminder of what Jesus did for us, of this meal he shared with his closest friends before he died on the cross for every one of us. So thank you for that, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for joining in. We just have two more videos uh, for our Lent adventure map. So come back for those and we will celebrate the end of Lent together. All right. Hope to see you soon and bye for now.